determine what you must do or can do to make the relationship work, then do it. Demonstrate respect and kindness to the other person whether or not he or she deserves it. Do not expect anything in return. Zip. Zero. Nada. You'll never be disappointed. Welcome. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us today. We pray that you are blessed by the music and the ministry of the service you are about to participate in. We are so glad that you have chosen to be here, and we pray that you are blessed. Now, if this is your first time, we ask that you let us know where you're watching from, because we have people in so many different countries. And if this message touches you, if there's something that blesses you, please leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, a heart. We just love it when you show your praise for what God is ministering to you. It's not for us, this is all about Him. So we want you to be a participant, not just an observer in this service with us today. And if there's some way that you need to contact us, if you have a question, if you need prayer, if you need a Bible, our information will be at the end of the video where you can reach out to us, you can call us, you can message us through Facebook. There's so many different ways, but mainly you can visit our central hub at GodspeedMinistry.com and all of the information is there. And if you want to continue your worship through giving, which is always goes to God, then we invite you to do that also through our central hub, GodspeedMinistry.com. Now, let's get into why you came into the message. On the front of your bulletin, if you'd like to turn there, we are going to be talking about that as yourself thing. Now, seven different times in scriptures, <clears throat> the Bible states, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, and the second is like unto it, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Most of us don't get that as yourself thing. Uh, one of the resources in your bulletin is a piece of paper that is written by a Reverend Wright. It says, test for yourself these spirits on the inside. Now, we're not going to go through this now. This is for you to do later. But if any of these things resonate with you, it will reveal to you an area in your life where the devil has come against you to, to diminish who God created you to be. And that is, again, an exercise for you to help you recognize, to bring you into a place that you can acknowledge, God, this needs to be healed. But I would like for us to read together the first scripture on the front of our bulletin in Luke 10, 27. Let's read together out loud. He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I started off yesterday morning, I've, I've sort of two different sermons, same topic. Because God has me here that we cannot love others until we learn to love ourselves. Why? With one exception in your life and in mine. With one major exception, all the world is comprised of others. If you can't get along with others, you're not going to have a very happy peaceful life. A lot of times we think if others would just get their junk together, my life would be a whole lot easier. So one uh, lady said, I didn't have any problem at all being good, being Christian, being godly inside my house. In fact, it was Joyce Meyer who said, I didn't have a problem at all living like God wanted me to do as long as I was in my house by myself. But when Dave and the kids came home or whenever I got out in the world, those people had problems I had trouble dealing with. Maybe we resonate with this. 
The story goes, to John, the problem at work was that people simply did not like to hear the harsh truth about themselves. They wanted him to paste a phony smile on his face and act like everything was just fine, when in fact, everything was in major need of rectification. The office was disorganized. The staff was incompetent, and here he was, just a junior associate, having to compensate for everyone else's laziness and sloppiness. The situation was even more irritating because he had endured the same problems at the school where he had taken his accounting course. Even his wife and his family seemed to often fail to do what he needed them to do. It seemed that incompetence was a worldwide epidemic, and he was the only one immune. How could he ever achieve success against such odds? Maybe sometimes you and I have felt that way. If others would just get their act together, my life would be a whole lot easier. Really? Would it really? I have to put to you today The God of the universe who created you and me in his image, I do not believe that he ordained or decided that our lives would be controlled by others or outside forces. Why would he give such power over our lives that we will stand before him and give an account of to other people? Would he not put all that power, all those rights, within the individual. John Doe was shipwrecked on a deserted island. He was there for many years. And the first need that he did after he found food was to build shelter. So he built a very nice little hut just for that shelter. And as time went on and he realized he wasn't going to be rescued, He also knew he needed a place of worship. So he built a lovely little hut church. It was very nice. And as time went on, he made improvements to his home as the years went on. And eventually he began to make improvements to his church. So finally one day, miracle of miracles, his little three buildings now, because he had built a third one at this point, were spotted from the sky, and someone decided to come and see who lived on what they thought was an uninhabited island. And they came and they got there, and, oh, John is just, thank God my prayers have been answered. Hallelujah. I am finally rescued. And the people were saying, well, the reason we came was because we saw the three buildings. We thought there was a village here. He said, oh, no, this is just my little town, my little island. And they said, really? He said, well, show us around. So he took and he showed them his first structure and he showed them how the, he, as his skills had progressed, he had gone from this little bitty grass hut and then he had made this addition and this addition and he had a lovely little grass home now, a hut home. And he said, oh, but let me take you and show you where I go to church. And they said, you go to church? And he said, oh, every day. He said, God and I have become very good friends. And he takes them and he shows them this very exquisite little hut that just exemplifies God. And they are like, wow, how awesome that you build a home and you build a a church, a, a building for God to come and have a place on this island. And they said, but yes, but what is this other building over here that has a church appearance to it as well? And he said, oh, that's where I used to go to church. I had such problem with the people there. This story illustrates to us the problem is not in others. Even when we are by ourselves on a deserted island or with Joyce Meyer in our homes, we come to find out that there are still issues in our lives. And maybe like our first illustration, this gentleman was so obsessed that it was always other people that he failed to look at the truth of who he was. 
psychologists and scientists have told the story on some of the national news media that you and I can be walking down the main street of a major BDC city. They picked out New York City, all the crowds and Times Square. And you are walking down through Times Square and each one of you would see different people and you would see them in different ways. Did you see such and such? The reason is that whatever is in us will resonate with other people who bear the same resemblance or the same things. I told our congregation yesterday, my oldest brother who is my, all three brothers are my junior, I'm the oldest of the family, but the one closest to me is also the most like me, and he and I fought like cats and dogs growing up. And even into early adulthood, I began to get to the point that I really did not like my brother because of all the things I saw in him. If he would just fix this, and if he would just fix this, and then one day God tapped me on the shoulder and said, Renee, do you not see those things in yourself? And I stood back in shock. You mean I'm like that? The world is a mirror. The things we see in other people that irritate and drive us nuts are things within ourselves that we don't want to have to deal with, that we don't like, that we want fixed, but because they are in our subconscious and most times we are unaware of them, we try to fix others. How many times have we heard of marriages who have been broken and shredded apart because one spouse became the potter of the other. It is said that most men marry hoping that their wives will never change. Most women marry planning to change their husbands. It is not our right. God created us as we are. He is the potter. And you and I do not have any right to remake any creation of his. We do have ex exclusive, unlimited right to remold and remake ourselves with his help. But that's sort of like telling a cracked pot to heal the wounds so that it can continue to carry water. A cracked pot, a, a pottery has no more capabilities of repairing itself than that race car can fix itself. But you and I, with our God-given rights, can invite God to come in and heal those broken places within us. That is what God desires. He created us, first man and woman, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, no flaws, perfection. He created us for perfection. He created us for eternity. All the desires in our hearts are there because God put them there. But somehow or another in this world, in the fallen state, because of choices we make, we have begun to feel the brokenness inside with toys, with food with sex, with drugs, with alcohol. Do you ever wonder why liquor and alcohol are called spirits? It is because they are trying to feel the broken places in our life. An alcoholic never has a drinking problem. He always has a spiritual problem. Any problem in your life is a spiritual problem. And in order to repair a spiritual problem, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the divineness of God himself. Now, I can tell that what I'm teaching you today is, I've never heard this, Renee. I'm not sure I agree with you. It's a lot easier to blame someone else. Why are you telling me all of this? What is your point in this? Because if I can't fix myself and others are not my problem, then what is the hope in all of this? The hope is 
our example of God in sending his son Jesus to walk this earth. The Bible teaches us that he was without spot or blemish. It says that he was, in, he was tempted in every way, just as you and I are. He was tempted with all the people and all their wrongs. In fact, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were Jesus Christ's greatest enemies. They hounded him. They tried to re ridicule him publicly. They tried to destroy his ministry, to destroy his reputation. They even tried to kill him. They had a heart of legalism and shutting you down. But Jesus never even bothered with them. Yes, he did tell them that they were a brood of vipers, of snakes. Woe to you. Sorrow, curses are upon you because of this. Not because he was the son of God, but because he was the son of man. If you notice in the scripture, it talks about being son of man and son of God. He knew exactly everything you and I could ever experience because he was presented with it at one time or another in his life. The Bible tells us we have a high priest who understands everything you and I are, come, are, are faced with or will come up against. There is nothing that you will ever go through that Jesus Christ did not experience. You need to know that. You need to carry that with you. But as I was studying and researching, as God has been bringing me into this, I'm like, well, God, what is our hope in all of this? If we can't fix ourselves and others are not our problem, what is the hope in this? And he took me to 1 Corinthians 13, which we know as the love chapter. And I keep referring to it because it is my baseline. It is what I need to know. I'm sorry, the wind's blowing my papers here. 1 Corinthians 13. Here we go. I'm going to read to you 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong, and love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, and it always perseveres. The Message Bible says that when we love, when we have true love, we don't even notice when others do things wrong. And my wheels begin to turn. When I love me, when I accept who God created me to be, when I understand that it was God who picked the day I would be born. When it was God who chose my mother and my father. And when it was God who chose my zip code. And it is God who orders my steps. And when I can get to the point that I can trust him with what he has ordained for my life in order to bring me to a place of goodness and I can begin to love me as myself to accept who God created me to be yes I may have messed up been there done that got the t-shirt I still make mistakes but until I accept this vessel and the person within the personality the voice the hair whatever until I accept who God created me to be as a designer creation, a divinely designed creation, and quit trying to be like everybody else, 
Only then will I begin to let go of the places in my life. And as I let go of those places in my life, I don't notice when others do things wrong. Jesus Christ lived this out perfectly. If there is nothing in us to be rubbed the wrong way, because we have been made in every way whole, then others can't rub it. It is the old proverbial chip on the shoulder. God amputates that from us when we begin to love ourselves. And when we do that, then we can love others completely. There's a new book just out that I ran across. It is called The 100-0 Principle. It is written by Al Ritter, and he expresses this this way. Jesus modeled, I haven't gotten there yet. Jesus modeled this example of removing the chips. He didn't have any, so he didn't get upset with everybody. He could go through life loving everybody because he loved himself. So Al Ritter explains the 100-0 principle this way. What is the most effective way to create and sustain great relationships with others? It's the 100-0 principle. You take full responsibility, 100%, for the relationship, expecting nothing, the zero, in return. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Implementing the 100-0 principle is not natural for most of us. It takes real commitment to the relationship and a good dose of self-discipline to think, act, and give 100%. I agree with this principle, but I agree, disagree with what he is saying because until you love yourself, until you love what you are, who God has created you, then it doesn't take any commitment on your part because God heals the places. But he's got the idea right. He knows what Jesus Christ did. So the 100-0 principle applies to those people in your life where the relationships are too important to react automatically or judgmentally. Each of us must determine the relationships to which this principle should apply. For most of us, it applies to work, associates, customers, suppliers, friends, and always family. So determine what you must do or can do to make the relationship work. Then do it. Demonstrate respect and kindness to the other person whether or not he or she deserves it. Do not expect anything in return. Zip. Zero. Nada. You'll never be disappointed. The control is in your hands, not theirs. When you expect other things from other people, you are giving them control of your emotions and your life. And that was never God's intention. Do not allow anything the other person says or does, no matter how annoying, to affect you. Be persistent with your graciousness and kindness. Often we give up too soon, especially when others don't respond in kind. Remember, expect nothing in return. At times, very few, the relationship can remain challenging, even toxic, despite your 100% commitment and self-discipline. But when this occurs, you need to avoid being the knower and shift to being the learner. Avoid knower statements and thoughts like, well, that won't work. I'm right, you're wrong. I know it, and you don't. I'll teach you, or that's just the way it is. And I need to tell you exactly what I know. Instead, use learner statements like, let me find out what is going on and try to understand the situation. And this one may be a novel one. I could be wrong. I wonder. If there's anything of value here, I wonder if. In other words, as a learner, be curious about what the other person is going through or what God would have you learn. The principal paradox, this may strike you as strange, but here's the paradox. 
When you take authentic responsibility for a relationship for yourself, more often than not, the other person quickly chooses to take responsibility as well. Consequently, the 100-0 principle quickly transforms into something approaching 100-100. They decide to respond the way you responded to them. When that occurs, true breakthroughs happen for the individuals involved, their teams, their organizations, and their families. What if, what if you and I allowed God to heal those places in our lives where other people seem to continually push our buttons? And one day you and I walk through this earth with no buttons to push. That is the life Jesus Christ lived. He is our example. He came to show us the way. And when you and I are healed and love ourselves, that love your neighbor thing, snap. Loving God, a snap. Because we love because he first loved us. You have two tools in your bulletin. The first one is to show you areas that need to be healed. The second one is called the love letter from God. And what you do with those love letters that every time something happens to you that pushes a button, you need to say, God, show me what I need to do to change. And this love letter from God tells you what God says about you and it gives you the scriptures. It's four pages, two pages front and back. Read it out loud. Let that be nothing you read until you get this love because until you love yourself, nothing else in the world will work. But once you love yourself, everything in the world works. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we bow in your presence this day. We are so grateful, Father, that you have come to make us whole. You knew we would be broken by the world and things around us. As children, we do not have control of our circumstances. But Father, the scars from our childhood or even adulthood are carried into our everyday life. And Father, you have come to heal those broken places. Father, none of us are immune from the, the cracks the wounds of the world but father you have brought us here today to receive your love your healing it is your desire that we can walk through this world and not see any wrong in any other people because there will not be any wrong in us to reflect hallelujah father hallelujah we praise you and we magnify your name. Father, I pray right now that everyone here would just say, I receive your love, Father. Heal me. Mold me and remake me in your image. Let that be our prayer from now until the day when you have made us whole. And then keep repairing us as we go through this world. In the name and the power of Jesus Christ Almighty, we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen, so be it. Blessings. Thank you guys for being here. It's good to see you. Have a blessed and awesome day. We pray you were blessed by today's message. We have some amazing people who are willing to go to the four corners of this nation to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if something in the message today, in the service of the music or whatever you saw or heard, touched you, and you want to reach out to us, please do so. Our information will be here. You can reach out to the ministry at 704-473-4212. Or you can get all of our information at godspeedministry.com
We want you to know God personally, powerfully, and passionately because we are preparing to become his bride when he returns for us or when we leave this earth. So we want to make sure that you have that relationship with him. That's our main priority. It's not just to give you a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge. To be adopted by the King of the universe and the Lord of Lords and to have all your sins washed away so that you walk in victory in this world. Godspeed Ministry exists to connect people to God and then to each other in service to bring other people who are hurting, lost, worried, confused, and afraid into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's you, make sure that you reach out to us. You can reach out to us in the comments, in the messenger, and again at GodFeedMinistry.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And if this message was a blessing to you and you are already walking with God and this just fired you up to walk even closer with Him, leave us a heart and let us know. And we'll see you in heaven. Godspeed.